Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of updates on the horizon for both AMD and NVIDIA strategy concerning GPUs going forward. I want to start this video out discussing the RTX 4060 Ti with pricing updates as well as release date information. And then we'll move on to AMD because by golly, a lot of stuff is happening with Radeon. We'll be discussing not only N32 and N33's pricing and release date strategy, but also some shifts in perhaps the lineup itself. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So then, let's start out with Team Green, because quite frankly, the RTX 4060 Ti stuff is just going to be quicker to go through. As regular viewers will know, I had actually positioned this card at $450 US according to my sources. A couple of sources had told me this price, including the same one who gave me a ton of information concerning the RTX 4070. But things seem to be afoot with NVIDIA. As many of you know, the RTX 4070 doesn't seem to have been selling as well as perhaps NVIDIA would have liked. And, well, this seems to be trickling down to other SKUs. There was a report recently by DigiTimes that an updated price uh, seemed to be 399 US dollars. Lo and behold, a couple of my sources have since reached out to me and said, yep, that seems to be the plan right now. There are still, well, conflicting information, of course, because at the end of the day, as I've said hundreds of times on this channel, price, de uh, price information can change literally the last minute. But it does seem that NVIDIA are considering heftily lowering, lowering excuse me, the price of the RTX 4060 Ti by 50 US dollars, which would bring it in line with around 399 US dollars. And that would mean that the card would be roughly on par with the RTX 3070 Ti from the previous generation. Now, whether that's cheap enough for you guys, I'm going to let you discuss that in the comments down below. But obviously, it's much more palatable. And if you're a regular viewer, it also is probably not too surprising. Because in a previous video, where I was reporting um, some information from Igor's lab, uh, he had basically been told that the RTX 4070 may be receiving some subsidies where they were going to basically put, in video I mean, around 50 bucks towards AIB so they could lower the price. This, of course, would mean some very interesting... Um, very interesting situations if the RTX 4060 Ti had launched at its initial price of, well, again, what I'd been hearing, 450 US dollars, it would mean there'd be basically only 100 bucks between them. Honestly, I still don't 100% believe any pricing information up until the point of launch, and that seems to be Computex for the announcement, according to Igor's lab, and just common internet chatter at this point. So basically, late May, early June is probably when these GPUs are gonna launch. Now let's shift to AMD, because if you thought things were up in the air with NVIDIA, oh boy, things are very interesting over at Radeon. As most of you know, the RDNA 3 lineup has launched with the 7900 XT as well as the XTX, and reception has been pretty good. Uh, they've got tons of VRAM, their performance in general is pretty decent, aside ray tracing, which... It does pretty well in some games, depending on optimization and a number of other factors. But overall, the cards have been fairly solid, at least in my opinion. The problem is they haven't been selling so well. Now, this is certainly not a problem, certainly restricted to AMD. As I just mentioned a moment ago, there are certainly a lot of cards in NVIDIA's lineup which perhaps aren't selling as well as expected. About a week ago, I hinted on Twitter after I put out a video that I'd been hearing of another SKU that would basically fit in between N32 and N31. And well, yeah, that does seem to be the case. The gist is that it's a heavily cut down N31 SKU with 35 workgroup processors. 
Now you can see the specifications on screen yourself. There's not too much to say because it's almost identical in specification to the officially announced W7800 from AMD, albeit with some changes. Now the specifications are tentative here. And again, I wanna stress that the 7800 XTX is probably canned. We'll be discussing why in a moment. The performance targets are roughly on par with the 4070 Ti. And again, 35 workgroup processors, 16 gigabytes of RAM, four MCDs, 64 megabytes of Infinity Cache, and probably around 300 watts TBP. And you can see how it compares to the N32 variant. So the 7800 XT, of course, the names could change up until again launch, but the, N the 7800 XT is the full-fledged N32 die. So it's got 60 compute units, or if you prefer, 30 workgroup processors, and very similar specifications in memory configuration to the XCX. So yes, it's very possible that this card was planned. Ultimately, of course, we're dealing here with, well, rumor, and you should take a lot of the stuff with, well, grains of salt, because until a product is officially announced by AMD, who knows what's misinformation, but I do think it's very likely, given the source who's given me this information, that it was true, especially because two sources have essentially told me the same thing. But I do think it's very likely that this is possibly canned. And the reason, well, basically, there's a couple of reasons. One, the N31 yields. I mean, the GCD is not like, you know, it's not the size of a house. It's not as big as, let's say, the dives for NVIDIA's higher end set of uh, SKUs. So, in terms of defect rate, it's not that atrocious. So, what you have essentially is not awful yields. So, if you have a die, at least to my understanding, if you have a die which is essentially bad enough, quote unquote, which need, would need to be cut down to this level of performance, it would probably go into a pro card where AMD can also charge a little more money. And that is ultimately the problem as well, because AMD's lineup in terms of graphics cards needs a little bit of rejigging. I've heard that a lot of stuff is going to be announced at Computex, and this is, again, what Igor's lab is also reporting. And it just makes sense in terms of just logic. Like, honestly, though, it's not exactly difficult to figure out where AMD would announce products. Like, Computex is typically a very big event for AMD, so why would they not announce something at Computex? It just makes logical sense, especially given... Well, basically, the mid-range RDNA free, uh, free lineup, excuse me, has just been missing in action. Things, honestly, are just very complicated at the moment. A few years ago, it's perhaps a little simpler. Uh, during the mining age, for example, it was very simple. AIBs and AMD and NVIDIA were making money hand over first, and customers were just getting the fist albeit in very uncomfortable places where the sun didn't shine, and now just everyone's in a state of flux and the market is just very uncertain. It's not very difficult to figure out why, just given economic conditions. I also want to give you guys a small tidbit in pricing for N33. I want to stress I have not verified this outside of that inf uh, outside of a single source, and it's just come to me, so you should take this definitely with a grain of salt. But I've been told previously that the pricing for N33 for desktop, I want to stress here, this is not for mobile stuff, for, this is for desktop, was probably going to be in the low 300 to mid 300 US dollars. So let's say 329 to 350 US dollars. However, now it seems that it's going to be a little bit under that, around 300 US dollars or maybe a little below that still. The reason, again, because of the market as well as AMD just wanting to be as competitive as possible. It's going to be super interesting to see how the market responds to these cards if price cuts actually do, well, I say price cut, we're talking about cards that haven't actually released yet, of course. I think there has been a, an air of frustration, honestly, from people for numerous reasons, whether it's VRAM, whether it's pricing, whether it's availability, and so on and so on. And you can also make a very good argument that, you know, let's talk about the 1490 for a second. Sure, it's really damn fast. It's, you know, fast as hell. But if you have a 1390 or a 1390 Ti, it's not like it's awful, right? I mean, even if you had a 2080 Ti or even a GTX 1080 Ti or a comparable AMD GPU, you've still got an awful lot of power there. And given people are just a little uncertain at the moment what to do, I don't blame people for just waiting until Blackwell or RDNA 4, which 
it's very likely to launch next year. I mean, sure, it's probably going to be the latter uh, part of next year, but at this stage, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, especially with uh, NVIDIA themselves being so honestly uncertain of what's happening with the RTX 4090 Ti. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. I actually had to do a complete rewrite of this script. Well, this video is semi-scripted because I basically got this information that a couple of these cards have been so significantly changed. And again, this is within just the past few days. I'll keep you guys apprised. Honestly, I think there's probably going to be at least another update before I finally arrive, possibly a couple. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see what actually happens with the market, especially with used prices at the moment from sites like eBay. And again, if you're just a mid-range gamer or just want an entry-level card, honestly, something like an RX 4, uh, 480 or a 580, they're not certainly great, but they're available so damn cheap. And also, this could be said for a lot of the RDNA 2 cards, for example, on eBay. Again, of course, I'm not telling you guys what to do. I'm just saying, definitely do a lot of shopping around. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see how AMD and NVIDIA market their products. With that said, take care. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.